In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The action that sometimes we took when we gave our life to Jesus Christ is the most powerful deliverance action that any person could take. That day that you believed in Christ and you openly confess that you give your life to Jesus Christ and you consistently behave like a Christian, it must seem nothing to you, but that confession transported you from the physical realm into another spiritual realm, which is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And if you continue and maintain your Christian belief, it is that which sustains you above every wicked spirit in the world. It's a powerful word. And Apostle Paul made us understand when you were in Comte 11 Tema here, opening your mouth and saying, God, take care of my life now. I give my life to you. And God accepted your prayer momentarily, even though you are physically in Tema, but you are transported into heavenly places in Christ. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a beautiful thing. You see yourself in Tema here. You see yourself sitting down. But in the sight of God, your spirit has been moved away from this environment into his authority. You are no longer under authority of the earth anymore. You are under his authority. So true confession and true changing of a man's life to follow Jesus Christ is the greatest deliverance any man will ever have on earth. Because the moment you made that proclamation Commission to Christ Jesus in the typology of scripture you are telling God to move you away from Egyptian power to Canaan so you began your spiritual journey Christianity is a journey the moment you open your mouth and genuinely you ask God to guide you have started your journey. So if you start your journey, you cross Egypt and enter into the wilderness till you come into Canaan. All this that I'm narrating to you takes place in the spiritual form because you see yourself still in Ghana, still in Ashama, and you don't know that what you have done is one of the greatest protection of your life. I'm giving you this prelude because of the question that we are going to answer, if it can be projected. A brother has proposed to a sister, and he's using the word courtship. I don't know courtship, I know betrothal, proposal. And he's saying that in Africa, when you get married, you are married into a family. And the woman that she has proposed to is a very strong believer. And while he is preparing to pay the dowry, his attention was drawn that in that family of that woman that she wants to get married to, there's a strange disease. So now the brother is confused. Should I go ahead and marry the girl? And if I marry her, what should I look out for? It happens. We are in Ghana here, we are in Accra, so we don't know much. But when you go back to our villages and you want to go and marry and you mention the family name and the rest, they'll be able to tell you that don't go there. Don't come here. Don't go there. That place, don't go there. That's what the world is. But I'm bringing this one to you simply because 
before Christianity came to we Africa, or it reached even Europe, before it came to Africa, our parents and our grand-grandparents and so forth, they didn't know God. So they summoned the whole house, including the unborn people, towards a spirit. In every village, in every town, everywhere, there is a fetish priest. Those are the ones who were gathering them. The king has his own fetish priest, fetish priestess, and the rest. Up till now, they are there. So sometimes, because of the spirit that we were summoning into, situations come into our homes which are not palatable. We know there are houses that people don't reach 50 years. I've told you before. There are houses, the moment you buy a bicycle tie, the following day you will die. There are spirits and powers who have conquered the generations and generations of those houses. And some of those things also say that there are strange diseases within houses. So our parents, they didn't know God and they pushed us to this one. And this spirit is affecting many, many families, not only in Ghana, across the world. The moment a person comes from a family and he doesn't know God, the scripture is still looking at him or her as he is living or she's still living in Egypt. The moment you give your life to Christ and you begin to worship the God of Israel, the Bible calls you, you have moved away from Egypt towards Canaan. And if by the grace of God, God accepts your transportation or your transformation from Egypt to Canaan, then whatever takes place in Egypt does not affect you. Physically, you are part of the family, but spiritually, you don't live there. So in actual fact, whatever has taken place in the spiritual realm upon that family, because spiritually you are out of the place, whatever incantation and trouble and curses that will come on that family, you are not part and parcel of it. Because what they did to the family is in the spiritual realm and you are no longer part of the spiritual realm of that family, you are out of it. Because God looks at the believer who has accepted him and want to worship the God of Israel and Jesus Christ, that he has transformed your life so whatever is, 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 is it that your family members have done when even you were not born, because you are now born by him and you are under his canopy, those powers do not have effect upon you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15 make us aware that and the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses and will put none of none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So now those who remain in Egypt will have that ancestral problems. You who have left Egypt, God is saying that through your belief in Christ, I have delivered you from the evil diseases pronounced unto you by the fetish priests, by the spirits who are angry, and therefore, so long as you are not living there, it will not have effect upon you. A Christian man and a Christian woman must have faith in God and believe in Scripture so that nothing un untowards can affect your love for a future spouse. I've come to contact with such families whereby women who are coming from that family can never get married or let alone engage and let alone get a wedding. 
It never happens. They have so many women in the family from generation to generation to generations. And the moment one woman come out of that family and believe in Jesus Christ, you see marriages and, 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 and what we call engagement and weddings surprising the family. I've seen families where, excuse me, say, if you are not careful and you buy a bicycle tie, you will die. Progress doesn't come. And it has happened to their uncles and their fathers and their fathers. fathers. But when men became, came to Christ and lived their life in Christ, they own mansions and they own cars till 2024. So what I'm telling you is a serious thing that the proclamation and giving your life to Christ is one of the greatest deliverance a believer or a man will have. Because apart from that, our forefathers, they destroyed us. They destroyed our homes. Not to their knowledge, they didn't know any other God. But God in his infinite mercy has pulled me away out from Egypt into a Canaan land. And therefore, he, the Lord, has sworn the diseases that are placed in Egypt, the evil diseases, I will not lay it on you. So come what may, no matter what has happened within that family, if that woman is a strong believer in Christ, the scripture tells her that she's free. Even sicknesses that has been sold in the spiritual realm, purposely for you, the brother or your dear sister, God will not allow it to come. It will never have effect upon your life because of the grace of God and because of your conviction to worship Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, without the anointing of God in David, David would have died. Seriously. Because people intentionally went to fascism and caught and bought sicknesses, disease, from him he woke up one morning from bed he couldn't wake up and the people who have done it they knew we are coming to visit the king the king is supposed to sit in the in on his throne in the palace and receive visitors oh no the king is sick oh they just came to spy the king is sick he's in bed he can never wake up then they will go back and raise their hands yes they have done it for him so in Psalm 41 verse 8, we see evil disease, they say, cleave fast, fast upon him. The way he is behaving, he shall not rise up. They know. But to their surprise, the young man grew to become very, very old. Because of the anointing of God in him. Today in 2024, because of Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost inside you, every strange disease, whatever it is, whether ancestral for it or people who have claimed to do it, it will never have effect upon you. Yes, he felt it. He felt the shake. He was in bed. They thought he would not rise anymore, but unfortunately, he rose up. To their surprise. They say, evil disease cleaveth upon him. And now that he's lying down in bed, he shall rise no more. But God is not man. God is not Satan. The God inside you transformed your life. He's the only one who can deliver us from the ancestral powers and fetishism and medicines that people sell, sicknesses that people buy from shrines and throw them across the family. So even though they were trying to do this to David, because of the presence and anointing of God inside him, the purpose that they will kill him, he will lie in bed and die, didn't come to pass. He rose up again. And if the sister is a strong believer, this also will happen to her. No matter what they do, be it ancestral curse or somebody specially behold the woman and try to put because of strange diseases and so forth, it will never happen. Because your spiritual governor will not allow it to happen because you are not there anymore. You see, sisters and brothers, when you give your life to Christ, sometimes we say confession. God, forgive me of my sins. I was a fornicator. I was a prostitute. I was a liar. I was an adulterer. 
please forgive me of my faults. Sometimes I even know that what I'm doing is wrong, but I still do it. But now that I've given my life to Christ, oh God, please forgive me. You see people talking about that. It's the, one of the most healthiest way of spiritual deliverance. Confessing of sins. It has serious implications in your victory in life against ancestral powers and spiritual powers in high places. Because in Psalm 103, verse 3, who, as God, forgiveth all thine iniquities. That moment that you open your mouth and talk to God about it, and God accepted it and wiped that forgiveness away. He also went forward, who healeth all thy diseases. Two in one. So when a man becomes stubborn and boisterous, I will remain in my sin. I will remain. I will not confess. I will still do this and so forth. You have problems. You are putting problem on your life. Because the confession genuinely to your father will make him forgive. And when he is forgiven, he attaches healing to it. So whatever the sister might have done in his family, whatever it is, so long as she has given her life to Christ and one time in her life she has confessed her old life and God has forgiven her, she's working with healing around her. No matter what the world will do, no strange disease will affect the woman. It's God's word. It's as pure as pure water. Better than pure water. We have to understand these things. See, when, when people do it, they take it for granted. God of my sins and my sins. And you go to catechism, they tell you to say it. It is not from you. It is not deeper from you. But when it comes un, unsuppressed, coming from you with tears in your eyes, crying to God, forgive you of your old trespasses. And God said, yes, I have forgiven you. Automatically, the bonus of healing comes around. Who forgiveth our sins and healeth all our diseases. So if you're a Christian woman and you come from a family and no matter what the family will do, you are afraid. Don't be afraid. So long as you are come out of that family, the power of God which is greater than the shrine that they took you to is with you. So we must not remain in error. We must not remain in sin. When they talk to us, we must pull ourselves away from error because it will help us. The moment we confess our sins and go for it, I mean, it helps our life, it helps our movement, it helps our future diseases that will fall upon us. And we don't know that. So people go to church and they sink and clap and still remain in their error. It's not a good thing. It will not help you. For the two works together, forgiveness of sins and healing of diseases because the, the unforgiveness brought diseases to cleave unto you. That is Egypt. They don't know Israel's God. So they have problems there. But the moment they turn up and believe in Israel God and change their ways to fulfill the God of Israel, that diseases is taken away from them. So the healing power flow through your life. Praise the Lord. People sit in church and they still remain adamant. They go to church on Sunday, but they are not serious Christians. They still live in their Egyptian way. This scripture will not fulfill your life for you. You can cry, 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 cry. See, God needs genuine repentance. No matter how bad you think you have been, genuine repentance will reflect in the healing power of God in your life. Whatever has followed your family because of your genuine repentance and working with God will cease from your door. It will rise above you to the, the, the following door. So that at, the, at the end of it, you become an oddball in your family. All of us, we are poor, but Kwame is rich. How come? You begin to find out. But they don't know that your secret is Jesus Christ. 
Your secret is God. Your secret is Christ. Your secret is living the word of God in your life. For Israel's prosperity on the land of Canaan is because they have left Egypt. If they were living in Egypt, they would still be slaves. But the prosperity of Israel is because they have left Egypt and they have entered into Canaan. Spiritually, when we leave Egypt and spiritually we enter into Canaan, the problems of Egypt is no longer with us. It's a difficult thing because we are physically in Ashima. But God looks at us in a spiritual form. And that is why he gathers all genuine born again Christians across the world and make them a holy nation. Spiritually, we are a holy nation. Royal priesthood, all genuine people. Because we are looking at ourselves from a physical point of view, but God is looking at us from a spiritual point of view. And I want to emphasize, even though you are sitting here in Comte 11, you are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because of the spiritual dimension of it. The flood in the days of Noah destroyed sinners. People wouldn't believe in God of Noah. The flood destroyed them. Noah was rescued because he believed God and obeyed God and followed God's law. And whosoever will believe in Jesus Christ and give his or her life to Jesus Christ and if the devil will come like overwhelming flood, God will raise a standard because of Christ in you. It's a powerful religion, Christianity. That when you genuinely worship God well, you become a testimony among your family members. And among witches and wizards and dwarfs and thieves, you become a confusing person. Because whatever they do, it cannot work. Because the power in you supersedes every power in the world. And his name is Jesus Christ. When Christ was physically on earth, he was performing things from one church to another, synagogue to another. Because he was physically in one body, this Saturday he's in this synagogue, tomorrow he's in that synagogue, tomorrow he's in that synagogue. Today, He's living in the spiritual realm that within one second he's in a million places. And what he was doing in the physical realm, you will read it, he's still doing it today. Today. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Now, this one, it was physical realm. Today he's still doing it. So if the Christian sister is still in church and believe in God, what Jesus Christ did physically, he's doing it in the spiritual realm. It affects her. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. This work is still being done in the spiritual form. Today, 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 today. So if I love a woman who is a Christian woman and somebody is bringing an idea that her family is having strange things and so forth, you must use the word of God to counteract, to overshadow, to cancel those words. Because this portion of scripture, he did it physically. Today he's doing it in the spiritual realm, going from church to church, preaching the gospel through men and healing the sick and all manner of diseases. So if my will-be wife is still among the church and Christ is fulfilling Matthew chapter 4, 23 in 2024, he will touch my wife. He will touch my will-be wife. Whatever disease that be, God will heal it. It is faith. It is faith we use to enter into a woman's life, enter into a man's life. If you don't have faith in Christ, you can't do anything. Because the world without Christ is full of stories. They will give you stories that will discourage you. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But a believer must live by gospel, must live by the word, must live by Christ, must live by the conviction of God's word. Some time ago, it's a long time we did communion service, but my sister had a partial stroke. So she went from the hospital, she came. The left side was numb. As she was coming to sit down, nobody knew, but she couldn't raise the left side. It has become numb. And they have given her a full box of tablets in her bag. So as we were sharing the communion, when it reached the wine, she took the wine and something struck the shoulder and she raised her hands. That's all. The stroke was gone. Up till now, the stroke is gone. So up till now, God is still fulfilling this scripture in the spiritual form. In the spiritual form, up till now, healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. The gospel is being preached through men. And we are in churches because he went into the churches and his spirit dwells among his children. Brothers and sisters, let us take God serious. Let us take our belief serious. And all manner of words, all manner of enchantment, all manner of divinations, whatever it is, what didn't they do to David? But God sustained him. Whatever they would do to you, God will sustain you. Amen. Because he's inside him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the only true God whose power is from eternity to eternity. Yes. Your name is Jesus Christ. We pray that as we explain your word, your children will hold your word to the highest level and see your grace that you have bestowed upon the Gentile dispensation. If you have not come into our lives, some of us would have been gone many years ago, Lord. The Gentile dispensation have seen a treasure and that treasure is you, Jesus Christ. Bless us, Father. Bless our homes. Bless our marriages. And your son who is having contemplation with a woman that she wants to get married, touch his heart that no power in this world can touch a woman who has believed in you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Our brother Asidu is in your hands. You are a powerful God. I send for the word of healing into the pot clinic and pull him out of a sick bed back into his house. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.